edition, how Brexit has become a sea of uncertainty for the English, Scottish and French fishing crews. Already unhappy with the EU common fisheries policy, the trawler crews now face the added threat caused by the mishandling of this whole Brexit process. The clash between French and English fishing boats over scallops brought the issue into sharp focus. Our reporters have been to the fishing ports and on the boats to gauge the mood for the politicians. There are rough seas forecast ahead. This report. It's 4 a.m. in the English Channel. We're on board the Marmoset, a French fishing trawler steered by Olivier. He's been a skipper for 30 years and often casts his net in British waters. Britain's seas are among the most fish rich in the world. A treasure shared among European fishermen for Olivier mostly fishes in the Channel, the sea that separates northern France and southern England. We can see the Dugness Spit. I spent 60 to 70 percent of my time in British waters. France is here, and the United Kingdom is on this side. This is the narrowest section where the two coastlines are closest. They're only 22 kilometers apart. I'm about in the middle. You can see here, that's my boat. And the borderline is in green. So here, this is the English side, and that's the French side. So obviously, if, after Brexit, us French are kicked out of British waters, I'll lose 70% of my profit. Basically, I'll go bankrupt. Since 1983, boats from across the EU have been fishing freely in one another's economic exclusive zones. When Britain leaves the EU, this zone, which stretches 200 nautical miles from the coastline, will no longer be European. If Britain restricts access, European vessels could lose more than half of their catch. French fishermen would lose the most money, 170 million euros a year. Fish caught by us. It's delicious. It was caught in British waters. In a cruel irony, Olivier and his nephew signed for their new trawler just before Britain voted to leave the EU. The Marmoset cost two and a half million euros. It's early morning on the French side of the channel this time. Now we're going to pull in the nets. The EU tries to protect fish stocks by allocating maximum catch limits for different species to each country. They're known as quotas, and member states can sell or lease them to each other. The Dutch have bought out more than 20% of England's quota. They're the bankers of the sea, says Olivier. When he spots one fishing in the same zone, he refuses to switch course. He's just in front. Tell him I won't move. The vessel is Dutch, but because it owns English quota, it's flying the United Kingdom's flag. Ask if he just wants me to go back to Boulogne and leave the zone to him. You want uh, I go back uh, to Boulogne? The French are being sarcastic. No, so maybe for, uh, for one whole uh, turn earlier to east. So after this, uh, no uh, problem uh, with us. If Britain breaks away from the EU's quota system and restricts access to European fishermen, they'll all have to cram into a smaller area of sea. That could lead to overfishing. For now, the EU says its quotas have allowed fish stocks to improve, and by the year 2020, they should be sustainable. But there's a big drawback. There's a ban on fishing sea bass. We've just caught one by accident. 
A sea bass which weighs 4 kilograms, that's 80 euros. So we have to throw away 80 euros into the sea, even though it's dead. This winter we were targeting squid. Four tons of sea bass got into our net. We had to throw them back into the sea. Throwing dead fish back into the sea because they fall outside the EU's quotas angers fishermen across Europe. You can go to every port in France and all the fishermen will tell you the same thing. 96% of British fishermen voted to leave the EU and it wasn't for the hell of it. They voted Brexit because they're fed up. After 72 hours of fishing, the Marmazet arrives home in Boulogne. This is the busiest fishing port in France. 65% of the catch comes from British waters. With Brexit looming, it's on borrowed time. We cross the channel and head to Devon in the southwest of England. Ilfracum used to be a busy fishing port. Now it's a spot for holiday makers. There are only two trawlers left. Keen not to lose them, the port doesn't charge them to dock. They belong to the Wharton brothers, Scott and Paul. I'll open that gate this time, aren't you? Over 10 metre trawlers. We think we're probably nearly the last two on the west coast of England. There used to be 20 boats operate for North Devon. I wish there was more boats here. The Whartons are determined to stay in business. There are only half as many fishermen in Britain as there were 35 years ago. What did you want? I couldn't make out what you wanted. I need a small box. Claire and her husband, Paul Wharton, run a cafe on the quayside. They sell fish and seafood straight off the boats. I like to have a selection, not lots of anything, just a mixture. Why? Because it's more interesting to look at on the slab. Yeah, see? Not just a pretty face. <laughs> Making the catch look appealing. Highly necessary, given the British live on an island surrounded by a huge range of fish species, most of which they don't eat. They stay safe with salmon, tuna, prawns and classic cod, particularly in the form of fish and chips. Places like this are rare. That is so fresh. That do it. Four people easy. It would be four people. Yeah, you need two really. Cheese on top is nice. Cook one side, turn the other side up, cook it, and grate cheese on top. Let the cheese melt on it. Really? You it, you? Enjoy. Thank you very much. Fish and seafood lovers do exist in Britain, but they're few and far between. It's fresh. It's fantastic. It's, and it's not expensive. Yes, Tim. Brave boy. Ah, uh, well done, I guess. She said bye bye. I'm going to call him Angus. Angus after Angus, ready? Whee! British fishermen catch over 50 species of fish and seafood. The Whartons want to encourage everyone to eat more. Good to see the young people eating fish. There's not enough of that in this country. We've maintained our business. I don't know how we have, but we have. Through our commitment, not. And, and, and you've got to have a passion for it, because, to be honest, the money involved in it now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't invest to get the return on your money, because you just wouldn't get, you wouldn't get the return. It's not because there isn't the fish at sea, it's because you're not allowed to catch the fish at sea. Almost every fisherman voted for Brexit. They say the EU's quota system stops them making a living. What are we chopping off, Danny? Uh, where was he? And they point the finger at their own government. Scott's son, Dan, is also a skipper. It's hard, hard work, and the government make it a lot harder. They say their government has never supported them, and as Britain negotiates an exit deal with the EU, Dan isn't optimistic. When I fancy the fishing industry will be used as a bargaining tool, which won't do us any favours. Father and son might sell one of their trawlers and take on a smaller boat instead. Paul Wharton has already made that decision. Like three quarters of British fishermen, he steers a boat that's under 10 metres long. Nice weather. 
British weather was the best. Paul's days on trawlers are a thing of the past. With his smaller boats, he targets shellfish that aren't restricted by EU catch limits. He says they're getting tighter and tighter. They're just stopping everything. There's no bass, there's no ray quota, there's just no soul quota, no place, no cod. It just knock after knock after knock. And this is nature out here, and it's always been here for a lot longer than we've been here, and it still produces. Measure him, might be, yeah. might be the sun. Nice blueies, nice lobbies. Yeah. If you want to catch enough fish for herself to survive or not with other foreign boats, because they take a lot of their fish. So we want our waters back so we can have it for herself, for her future. British fishermen catch 40% of all the fish caught in Britain's waters. All the rest is caught by boats from other European countries. We decided to find a foreign boat that lands its catch on British soil. The Welsh port of Milford Haven is popular with Belgian vessels. For several days, we tracked one using an online map. It shows live positions of boats all around the world. There he is. At seven in the morning, as expected, the Belgian boat docked in Milford Haven after nine days at sea. It's nice fishing here. Uh, it's nice coming here. It's just seeing the other, other countries is also a nice part of our job, just going other places. You don't, go, you don't see uh, if you just stay in your own country. They hate us because we're Belgians and we fish in their waters. His dad has been coming here since 1988. Their boat fishes 270 days a year. Uh, we are always with six people on board and uh, three or four people stay home and we switch all the time. So when we fish over here until the quota's gone, then we can't fish anymore. So, so we, we fish all over Europe and actually. He thinks Belgian vessels get 70 to 80 percent of their catch in British waters. Belgium only has a small coastline. 64 kilometers long. It's for the auction in Zeebrugge tomorrow. Why? <laughs> to sell our fish in Belgium because the, the prices are better in Belgium than here. They catch 50 different species of fish in British waters, compared to only five at home. Like the fish, the crew are heading back to Belgium. For 30 years, a local Welsh agent has dealt with their customs forms, transport documents, and anything the Belgian crew might need. The boats are coming here are Spanish in Belgium. That, that, that is it. I think that everyone blames everyone else. They're only doing what, you know, what their quotas and what their licenses allow. Um, they're, not, they're not stealing that, are they? They're, Quotas are the main source of frustration British fishermen have towards the EU. But who really decides who fishes what? The European Commission gets advice on fish stocks from two independent scientific bodies. Each December, fishing ministers from across the EU decide how much of each species can be caught for the following year. But it's up to each government to decide how they distribute their quota back home. In Britain, boats under 10 metres long, which make up two-thirds of the fleet, have only 1.5%. And Greenpeace has revealed that just three companies own 53% of all English quota. A few big fishing companies are actually doing well. It's Britain's small-scale fishermen who are struggling to make a living with limited or no access to quota. Fishing rights off the coast of Britain have long been a battleground. Uncertainty over what will happen when it leaves the EU is not helping to calm the waters.